I'm going to introduce you in this video to the method that I've been using to manage email for the last eight years, Inbox Zero. A lot of people think the Inbox Zero is about having zero unread emails in their inbox. No, it's not. It's about having no new mail in Gmail or in Outlook. It says we didn't find anything to show here. And I can't wait to show you this method because I think it is going to revolutionize things. The issue that this is trying to solve is that people will forget what is processed and what is not. And so they'll waste so much time. Is this processed? Is this not processed? And run through that method of thought. So I'm going to go through how to do it and the method to do it practically in both Outlook and Gmail. I'm going to show you physical examples of the things you need to know for it. And then honestly, I think that you'll find it so easy. It'll become easier to do inbox zero than not to do inbox zero. I clear my inbox out once or twice a day and have zero emails for most of my life. So my name is David and I want to have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, or this kind of stuff like email. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So check out my other videos if you like this sort of thing. So let's go through some theory first. So a lot of people have an email inbox that's just made up of unread emails, spam emails, read but not yet done, and something that's already completed. And that ends up going to a lot of issues because you might have a win box or you might have a fail box. I do love my puns. And the biggest reason behind inbox zero is to stop you thinking, have I processed it yet? That's the main reason behind it. Because that thinking means you're going to end up repeating and duplicating tasks again and again and again. Particularly for ones that you have already completed but not filed, they shouldn't be there. And I know they can take a while to decide where to file it. Personally, I just file them all in one place, which is called my archive folder that I'll show you in a little bit. So uh, I'm going to introduce you to my friend. He's the two min shark fin. And it's just going to be this thing, this process that we run through, which is going to help us. So for each email, we're going to go through one of three different things. Either it's going to be something that we do in future, in which case we flag it, or it's going to be something that we do immediately, in which case if we can do it in two minutes or less, do it now. That's usually the cutoff point you should consider it. Otherwise, it's going to take you longer than two minutes to put yourself back into the mindset of where you were back then. And if you are looking at the majority of your emails, you never need to do anything with them. You just need them to be there so they may be searchable, but you don't need to do anything else apart from that. And the fin is in such a way that the smallest amount of volume is at the top. And so the future emails, the ones that you have to do later on, there's very few of those. Most, most, most emails, probably about 80%, you do nothing with them. They're in the never ever category. So the future ones, you flag them, you put them in a place where you can still access them and they can be in any folder, but if they're flagged or if they're start on Gmail, then you can still get to them through the sidebar that I'll show you in a little bit. The immediately stuff that you've already done it, so you don't have to worry about it. So the process is you go through email by email and you decide between these things, F-I-N, two men, shark fin. You decide, is it going to be something you do in future, in which case you flag it? Is it going to be something you do immediately? In which case you do it immediately. Is it going to be something you do never? Um, and I'm going to add in an S because if there's something that is spam, you're going to block that sender. Not enough Outlook Gmail users use the block feature. Absolutely use it. It means that their future emails will go automatically to junk. And if you accidentally do it, you can still uh, remove them from the block list, but definitely block them if you're going to do it. Personally, I don't ever delete things because storage is so cheap nowadays that I don't want to go through the hassle of the decision of am I going to ever need to search for this? So I just move everything to archive where it is still within my search menu. It can be searched and I haven't deleted anything. And the idea is that email is not something that you just do all the time. Email is going to be something that we just run through once, twice, maybe thrice a day. But it's going to be something that it is in your to-do list. It's just something that you do that takes maybe two minutes, maybe 20 minutes, but you process it. And that is the best way to do email, in my opinion. And this is what inbox zero is. Not about having zero unread emails in your inbox. It's about having zero emails in your inbox. And I've used this process for the last seven years. So 
we're going to run the inbox zero process and I'm going to show you how to do this. Essentially, you decide FINS for every single email. You go through one by one and then you select all and you move it to this archive folder. Works in the classic version of Outlook, works in Outlook Online and works in Gmail. They always use this thing called archive. And one of the most important things is switch off notifications. If your notifications are off, then that means the email will become something you do once, twice a day. If your notifications are activated, then you're going to fall into the trap of email being something you're always doing. And this is, defeats the purpose of Inbox Zero. Uh, we live in a time where people can message you by umpteen million apps. So if something's really urgent, they won't email you about it. So just switch off your notifications. You never need to know right away. And it really will disrupt your train of thought. And uh, last thing is I don't really use rules very often. The only time I would advise using them is if you have a lot of emails in something like an email chain and you want all of those to go into something and then you will just quickly scan them every day, every couple of days to see if there's anything you missed. For those, I will set up a rule into its own folder. Otherwise, I use one folder, which is archive, and I put everything there. So let's look at how it works in the real world. So here I'm in classic Outlook desktop, and I'm going to go through Gmail and the newer version of Outlook or Outlook Online. So you just go through the emails and decide between those things. So this, this is clearly spam. So I'm going to block it. So you right click and you choose junk and you choose block sender. Don't show this message again. So we don't get it again. This is great, but you know what? I am going to decide whether to upgrade later or not. So I'm just going to flag it and I can just follow up today. And then it's going to appear up here. This one. So I'm going to do nothing. I don't want to block it. It's just a do nothing thing. This one is clearly a block as well. So just to show you again, block sender. So this one is giving me access for 30 days. So I definitely want to do that before it expires. So I can also tap the insert button on my keyboard and that will flag it. This one, do nothing. Really excited to be getting to this music festival. <laughs> this one, yes, I've just signed this. And I need to forward it on. So I'm going to do this right away because it's going to take me less than two minutes. So I'm going to send it to this, just my email, because I don't want to give away someone else's. Uh, this one, this is something I can do now. So I'm going to reply. And if I pop out, I've actually got a quick part that says, hi. Yeah. So I'm just going to send this canned response. Uh, that has the link there. Yeah. So this is an actual email from an actual person. <laughs> Please prep the proposal. This is a totally re real email. This one, I do have to prep the proposal. I'm going to hit the insert button to put it up there. And this one, this is just kind of an FYI. Something I don't want to unsubscribe. Uh, actually contribute to these guys, so that's good. Then after that, you can just press Control A, select all, and click on archive here. Or I love the shortcut using backspace. Control A, backspace will just take you there. If you do that, then it moves it to this folder here. Your archive folder is essentially everything that you haven't bothered to file. Now, it's up to you how you do your filing. Me personally, I find that the search here is so fantastic once you know some tips and tricks that I don't need to file it because I can always find exactly what I need. So yeah, if you want to know more about how to use this, then I have a short video of 90 seconds where I talk about wonders of the search bar. It's also on my YouTube channel. I'll link in the description below. Now let's go to other, for example, here is where they try and put emails that are not that important. So for this one, you can just press control A and then you can just mark it as red. So you can either right click it and mark as red here, or you can press control Q will also do it and then press backspace to move them. You never want to have any unread emails. You always want this to be empty to just to know that they've been processed and that's essentially what you need. All right. So this was Outlook desktop classic version. Let's look at Outlook Online, which is also the newer version of Outlook desktop. So here I'm again in this email and I can just click on this one and great. This one, I'm going to do nothing. This next one, I am actually going to block this one. I don't want this. I lied before. So you can right click and you can choose block and block sender. So pretty much the same. Press OK. This one, I'm going to need to flag it. So just put a flag again, insert, or you can use the flag from there. You can always use pin on pin. What that does is it puts it to the top, but 
I actually don't like doing that because then it stays in your inbox. This one is a do nothing. This one is a, well, I have to forward this to someone. So I'm going to forward it. You can add these icons over here. I'm going to forward it to myself. There you go. Do it now if it's less than two minutes. This one I'm going to flag. And this one, I'm just going to leave it there. And then just like before, when you're done, you can just select all these messages and click on archive. And it will just move them there. That's it. And now you have zero emails in your inbox. The Gmail, let's just go over the differences. So this one, I'm going to start it. That's how you start it. That's the equivalent of flagging in Gmail. Probably already know that this one as well. This one, I'm going to block it. Uh, that is in the three dots. And then if you scroll down, you'll see block and then block. And then you just don't get any more from that thing. And then you can just select all and you can click on this archive. By the way, on Gmail, start is up here. It's kind of like Outlook Online's pinning feature, but I just like to get them out of the inbox anyway. So click on that and choose the archive over here, similar to what you have with Office. And it says no new mail. There's nothing in the actual inbox. Now, uh, if you want to get the start one, you go to start over there. And if you want to know where all of them are, they're just stored in all mail. So there isn't the thing called archive. All mail just has essentially everything together. But your inbox is something that you manage and you know that it's been processed. Again, the search in Gmail is absolutely fantastic. Google literally invented internet search or they're the masters at it. And so if you just get comfortable with using certain terms like this, then it will really just be all that you need to do to make this working. So I hope you enjoy this video. My name is Dave Renan and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Zoom, Google Sheets, Teams, even this stuff like email. If you're using Tick of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So give this video a like if you found it useful. Thanks for watching.